there you are, a psychiatric nurse, mm-hmm. very busy in your job, undoubtedly, and no doubt we'll talk about that later. Um, how was it that you were yearning to get into stand-up, or weren't you? Was it an accident? No, I was yearning. Were you? <laughs> I was. Um, well, I like the sound of the hours. <laughs> <laughs> Because if you're a nurse, you do... Well, I did a lot of 13-hour shifts. And if you're a comic, you drive to somewhere three miles away, do 20 minutes, and then you're finished for the night. <laughs> and I like the sound of that. And I also I quite like making people laugh as well. I think it's a good thing to do. Because mm. it's a miserable old world, isn't it? Yeah. Especially must be round here. I don't know. <laughs> is it? Or is it, is it quite cheery around here? It's, it's weird, you know, because sometimes when I'm touring, I go to different towns, and if you take the <laughs> then they really hate it. <laughs> Cheltenham's a bit like that. <laughs> and actually, they kind of believe sort of what you say as well. Because you know how gorgeous Cheltenham is? I love going on and going, <laughs> And they get really wound up about it. When you're obviously joking, because it's one of the most beautiful Regency towns in the country. But they can't do teasing. <laughs> they can't do teasing. Whereas if you say the same in Middlesbrough, they go, yeah, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> they quite like that. So did you find... For example, I'm thinking when you had your children and then you, you took your time off naturally mm. to nurse them and be a mum to them, was that, uh, did you feel it great about that or were you worried about your career? Now I felt great about it, mm. actually, because a lot of friends of mine said, oh God, it's going to be awful, you know, you're going to have to stay in every night and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I've been out every night for the last 15 years and I'm sick of it you know and it was lovely in my 90s sick all over me <laughs> watching EastEnders with a pint of Guinness it was absolutely bliss I loved it so yes no I didn't know I, I, I've never kind of worried about my career because mm. I mean a lot of blokes that we know mm. have a sort of very detailed Stalinist five-year plan don't they yeah. about where they want to be at a certain point in their life and it's exhausting listening to them I mean with me because I have so such low expectations of life generally when something vaguely nice happens I'm really pleased you know <laughs> so that to me would just be like a nice gig where I got an encore yeah. or would be someone going to want to stand in the background on this telly show yeah. so everything to me is a bonus and I never made a plan because I never assumed it would go any further than just being booed off at a few comedy club so it's great perfect solution for my life mm. have we got many people with children here we obviously have that first sort of year is hideous isn't it you realize there's a conspiracy not to tell you just how appalling it is <laughs> and the worst thing about it is the sleeplessness I found I just I was so bad tempered you know to the point where even when nice things happened I would be irritable so like, I remember after my daughter was born someone came around about a week later with flowers and standing at the door with this gorgeous bouquet I've got some lovely flowers for you and me I just oh god god I can't <laughs> you know, you're like that for years. It's terrible. I'm surprised that, that every single marriage doesn't, or partnership doesn't break up when you have kids, because it is so stressful. You know. So yeah, we're putting you off. Um, I just, you know, just the opportunity not to have to make an effort and go out and do stand up, which inevitably would inevitably would mean looking clean mm. and uh, presentable and washing my hair and stuff like that. So timing was perfect. It. it was absolutely yeah. perfect, yeah. Um, well, one person that I really like is John Higley. Do you know him? He's a kind of comedy poet and he's got such a sense of kind of bitterness about his comedy. He comes from Luton, so he would be bitter. <laughs> he's just a very clever, very funny guy, and um, I've, I've always loved him. He does this fantastic poem called Pat, I don't know if you know it, and it, I wish I could, I must learn it actually, so I wish I could recite it, but basically it goes, Pat, you are fat, but you, and you don't realise how gorgeous and glorious and fantastic you are. And then at the end, Pat goes, what do you mean, fat? Um, and, 
he's just got lots of lovely stuff like that where he kind of pulls the rug away at um, the end of the poem. So I'd say him, Billy Connolly, I'm still a big fan of because I just think he is so funny, which is what a comic should be, really. Have you met uh, him, Joe? No, I haven't met him, no. I've met Pamela Stevenson, she's very nice. Um, <laughs> and Victoria Wood, and French and Saunders, and particularly French and Saunders, fat, pervy old blokes. Do you know them? <laughs> the ones that go, <laughs> As you're writing, within that, that whole process, when do you know that you need to start winding up that you I mean is it are you back to your word count or do you know how you're going to end count. it Absolutely <laughs> really? <word count. laughs> it's the same with my stand up as well <laughs> <laughs> if they say to me can you do 55 minutes I'll go right I can get away with 53 and then I'll look at my watch and if it's at kind of 52 17 I think it's all right and I'll get off I, I'm, and that's exactly what I do what I'm, when I'm writing my editor is here tonight, so he won't be pleased to hear this. <laughs> but actually, my my writing life is all about how few words can I get away with writing <laughs> before I can finish the book. And you're kind of looking at roughly 75,000 words. And because I'm writing my autobiography at the moment now, I've only just finished the novel and they're making me write my autobiography, which incidentally is called Look Back in Hunger. I do apologise. <laughs> um, but... Um, were, there, were, were there particular people in your life that encouraged you to write? Because it strikes me as it, it, no one's ever told you, no, you can't do that. You, you've always reached out and accept every challenge that you're given. Yes, I do like a challenge. Mm. Um, well, I, w I would say they didn't particularly encourage me to write yeah. um, in, in my family. Um, but uh, then again, on the other hand, they didn't tie my hands behind my back and try and stop me either. I mean, I... I, I kind of come from a very, my parents were incredibly strict and rigid when I was a kid you know and we kind of felt slightly alien from other kids because I think when you're a kid what's really important is that you can identify with your peer group and you can do the sorts of things that they do and mm. talk about them and you know for example I don't know why this was but we weren't allowed to watch Doctor Who and everyone used to talk about it at school on Monday mornings and I had no idea what they were talking about and I felt kind of slightly lonely because of that and I don't actually think parents really realise that, that when you're six that's incredibly important. Yeah.